Candlebug Crafts episode 25. Hey, you know what? I just realized <laughs> this is the week that I turned 25 and this is episode 25. That will never happen again. <laughs> um, hey, this is Amanda Bug Crafts. If you're new, sorry. I don't normally get, s okay, no, that's a lie. I do normally get that distracted. Um, if you don't like easily distracted people, this may not be the show for you, but it's worth sticking around to find out. And returning viewers, you guys already know all that. <laughs> so I'm surprised you stick around. <laughs> um, so I will go ahead and start the show out with something I've learned this week. Okay, so this was this week was my birthday, and um, I just have the most amazing people in my life, pretty much. Um, thank you all for your birthday wishes. I really appreciate it. And um, Thank you, Lindsay, times a million. So, Lindsay, my really good friend, um, who's got her own podcast, the Knit Whim podcast. You can go check her out. Um, she's on YouTube. Well, for my birthday, she bought me, like, the most amazing gift ever. So, she got me Rolex. Ah! So, I have the tag right here. So, she got me Rolex from... Look at my handshake. Man, that's the coffee. Yarn Shine Fiber Arts Rolex. What else does that say? Just hand carded, hand rolled fiber rolls spin from the top. And she got me Ocean's Eve. And it's 3.05 ounces of Merino Black BFL Bamboo Something Fire. <laughs> it's really small handwriting. Merino Bamboo. YX Silk BFL Super No, oh, maybe that's Tessa Silk and Firestar. Oh no, it's really small handwriting. Um, but look at this color. Look at these. Oh my goodness. Am I spoiled or what? Why is my camera like wobbling? I'm not even touching the table. Um, yeah, dude, look at these. They have like really pretty fire star in them too because you know me I like my sparkles they have like turquoise sparkles in them and I think there's other colored sparkle in them too and oh, these are just so 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 beautiful so um, I had never spun from Rolex Rolex however you say it I never spun from them before so that's what I've been doing this week and um, it's amazing so I have to do the wool and spinning that I've been doing and um, Lindsay corrected me so I guess I wasn't doing a long draw it was like a supported long draw so it's still a wool and spin but long draw is when you can get the tension on your wheel so that you just hold the fiber and the tension is what you use to pull against but I can't I couldn't figure out how to set my tension up like that on my wheel and so I just I was doing the supported long draw where you still only hold the fiber and draft from there but I was I was adding the extra tension needed to be able to pull that fiber away so so like a supported long draw um, but anyways um, I have my first like I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with it is I'm spinning it lace weight and it's gonna be a two ply lace weight and I have almost half of it spun but it's not done yet and I didn't want to mess up the tension and take it off my wheel so um, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a video of it so you guys can see it so here you go so here is the progress I have on my roll logs on my wheel I got this pretty pretty bobbin um, it's showing fairly true to color um, like I said, it is very dark, so it's mostly black with pops of turquoise, and you can really see all that fire star glittering beautifulness, so I'm very happy, and like I said, it is very, very, very thin, um, going to be a two-ply lace weight, so excited about that, and you can see I got my Rolog just kind of hanging, hanging out there off the wheel, so, yep. So it is so pretty. Like I, I started spinning it just like in the first few seconds I was like this is going to be lace weight black sparkly gorgeousness and I'm going to knit some lace with this because that's that's what it said. That's what it told me. That's what it told me that. So um, I'm super excited to get it all spun. This is my first lace weight, my first roll eggs, roll logs, whatever. Um, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. 
Um, so thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> um, so um, if you've never spun a roll log before, it's really just like it says on the tag. Just spin from the top. You literally just pull a little bit of fiber from the top and just... Is my camera wobbling? Like, I can... It looks like it's wobbling. <laughs> I should have edited that out, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, you literally just spin from the top, and that, that's what you do. So it, it's very simple. Um, you could do like a worsted spin off these roll logs. Um, it, it, they're just they're seriously really easy to spin. Um, so moving on to my works in progress. I am going to go ahead and be honest, you guys. Uh, my husband has been playing poker online, and he's got me addicted to poker online. So I have literally been playing so much poker this week. Oh, this is so weird for me, because normally, like, all I want to do is craft. And the, the poker's throwing my craft game off, like, serious. Well, and, like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but, like, my hair's all crazy. I'm in my pajamas, dude. I got jammy pants on. I'm working nights. I just woke up. Um, I just, I gotta keep some sort of a schedule and I'm already late and I feel bad. But, um, so anyways, works in progress. I don't have a lot. This week I really only worked on, um, one of my clopactuses. One of my clopacti. So, this is clopactus by this lady whose name will be at the bottom of the screen. These are on US size 6. And this is, um, this is Sunrise Fiber, Sunrise Fiber Company in the Champagne colorway, Studio Sock. And you can see I have started drop eight stitches here. And so I will continue going up the rest of the shawl and dropping stitches, but I didn't make a lot of progress on this guy. But, so that's my one work in progress. Moving on to finished objects, I finished the other Klopak die. So, um, here it is. And this thing, dude, is huge. Look at this. This is huge. I can't even show you. I'm gonna fall out of my chair. So, um, I dropped all the stitches, and I washed it, and I blocked it, and this, this giant thing, this huge, giant, giant, is one skein of sock yarn, which is what my favorite thing about it is. Just one skein. Um, and this is for my mother-in-law, and I'm planning on sending it to her soon before it gets too warm, and she really likes scarves, so I figured this would be really good for her to wear as a scarf around her neck, just kind of like this, and she could tuck in the ends if she wants it to look like a cowl. Just tuck them in. Or, I mean, she could wear it many different other ways, too. But her, these are two of her favorite colors, especially together. And she said she wears a lot of black. So this should look really good with all of that. So um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It was a really quick knit. But like I said, you don't usually have more than, like, there's no more than 100 stitches on your needle at a time. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with this pattern. I'm glad I'm making two of them. And... I feel like this is a pattern I may go to um, and knit again and again. And it's free, so um, I don't know. I think it's worth checking out. Um, moving on to Check It Out. So for Check It Out this week, um, I wanted to talk about dyeing again. I know <laughs> some of you may not be interested in dyeing, but I... Uh, Hey guys, I am so sorry about that. I guess I had accidentally turned on some sort of thing where my camera thought every time I moved I needed to be recentered, and that is not good because I move a lot and I hope I didn't get any of you guys like all motion sick. Um, but anyways, um, no, for check it out, I want to talk about dying because I will be doing that soon and I'm not talking about like industrial or mass producing dive as like a business. I'm trying to just do this as a hobby in my home, which may be something that you guys have thought about or are thinking about, um, especially if you spin. But, um, so I ordered my dye finally, and I ended up going with Greener Shades dyes. I got their starter kit. It was like 35 bucks, and it comes with enough to dye like 14 pounds of fiber. 
So I have one pound, um, and I've ordered more goodies that I'll talk about later. But um, I thought that would be something good to start out with because um, I was talking to Lindsay and she had mentioned these dice to me. They are non-hazardous and they don't use the heavy metals that other dyes use to um, to make, you know, they don't, they just don't use them. So um, it's a lot safer. Now I don't know, I've been doing research and I haven't really found anything conclusive on if they're like food dyes, like can you use them in pots that you've been cooking with. I don't think they're that safe that you can actually reuse the containers that you've been cooking with or use them in your cooking microwave or in your oven but um, they are a lot safer than some of the other options out there um, so I'm just gonna go with those because you know the safer you can be with toxic materials the better so I'm really excited um, that it's at least a little more on the safer side uh, I, you know you still have to wear the masks because any fine dust particles are hazardous for you to be breathing in, but um, it's nice to know that like there was um, on their website they have like a I don't know it's from a company that um, says how dangerous it is and it says like if you ingested it you could probably just drink a whole bunch of water and dilute it in your system and probably wouldn't have to induce vomiting which is that's cool so I mean not that I like, like I said not like I'm trying to eat it but you know you never know what happens so um, it's just nice to be using something that's a little less toxic um, so those are on their way um, and I thought I would share the knowledge with you guys if you haven't heard about those you can go check them out greener shades yeah just called greener shades dyes and I, I picked up their starter kit um, and they also have um, and I don't know if this is the same for other dyes but they have like a book that you can buy there's a pamphlet pamphlet and a book. This pamphlet, I don't know how much it's got in it, but it's um, a bunch of formulas and recipes on, excuse me, how to mix their colors and get some of the the color combos um, you're looking, ugh, excuse me again, I'm so sorry guys, um, to get some of the color combos you're looking for, or um, there's like a hundred dollar book, and I guess it's got like over like 250 um, formulas for colors. I'm not going to purchase those because I think I just, half the fun, half the battle is playing. So as long as I have a notebook and I just keep notes of the colors I have and maybe tape a little sample color in with them, um, I will be fine. So, um, so yeah, check it out. And then current events. So, um, I got some fiber in the mail. Uh, it was perfect timing. It was for the completely twisted and arbitraries spinning, what is it, Twisted Gals Spin Along. And I had already spun the Rusted Song colorway that went with that spin along. And I couldn't resist because I, I, it's the fiber is dyed by Pigeon Roof Studios. And I absolutely loved my Rusted Song fiber. So I went back and I ordered Scattered Lines. And that... This one was a Superwash BFL, and I've never spun BFL before either, and oh my goodness, you guys. BFL is softer than Merino, and it's a different kind of soft, though. Um, I could tell immediately when I started spinning it why BFL is mixed with silk. It's got a longer staple length, and the kind of softness is like the softness you get with silk. Silk is a very hard and durable fiber, but like when you run your hand along it, it's, it's silky smooth. Um, whereas like Merino soft is like, it's like a squishy soft. It's not, it's, it's, it's a different kind of soft. They're still soft, but yes, I feel like the BFL feels softer. Um, and so, um, as I was spinning this BFL, I automatically started spinning it the supported woolen way that I had been spinning my bat. And, um, I was like, oh, whoops. And so then I started spinning it regular worsted. And I noticed as it was piling up on my bobbin, there was a there was a big difference between the worsted and the woolen way that I was spinning. The worsted spinning was a lot tighter and neater, and it was like a cl like a clean line of thread, um, but it wasn't very soft. And then the wool the supported woolen spin that I was doing was a very like wiry spin, like it had like little like a little halo of fuzz around it, but it was a lot softer. So I had to make a decision <laughs> and I decided to go ahead and keep spinning 
this supported wool and spin on my BFL and I've already spun it all so I don't have the braid to show you but it is combed top so it's not it was not a woolen prep it was a worsted prep that I spun woolen so it's what semi worsted S semi worsted semi woolen I don't remember I don't want to get them backwards um, but it's when you mix the two the one type of prep with the one type of spin so I think it's I think it's semi worsted don't quote me <laughs> but um, so I've spun them up and I have this bobbin and this bobbin. I decided to split them in half and uh, chain ply them on themselves like I did with the rusted song. So um, this one I have started plying on my trindle and you can see it's very very thin. I was shooting for a fingering weight and it is bordering lace weight and it's scaring me. I didn't want it to be that thin. Um, but I really like how the colors are turning out. I think this is going to be a, another gorgeous yarn uh, spun from Pigeon Roof Studios um, yarn. It's just gorgeous. Now, this bobbin, you can see I got like these guys hanging around. And I think why I got them is because um, I st the, the, the fiber started getting overspun because I packed this bobbin full. So this is only like a little over two ounces but um, when you get on my wheel I notice when you get like to the outer areas it doesn't like to take the yarn up as much the singles. Um, so what it'll do is it'll just keep spinning and spinning and just twisting that fiber and not really eating it and um, so I got some overspun singles on the it's just on the outermost um, the last bit of it, which I think um, chain plying this on my trindle, I should be able to eliminate some of that twist and um, kind of pull it out and then a, a bath should help as well. So, um, And this one's going to be interesting because I just spun it straight from the braid and the braid was like this much like dark blue and Blue, regular blue and then in the middle there was this long stretch of like white and brown and yellow and then at the end it was blue again so I should have very 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 long color changes in this um, skein as opposed to this one it was kind of all over the place um, so it, it will be interesting I'm excited to see how this turns out so I gotta keep chain playing those guys um, and so my next current event oh so it was my birthday week, so I did the drawing for the cupcake giveaway, and I went ahead and shot a separate video of that because I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, and I wanted to be able to edit it, so um, I'll insert that here. Alright, so our numbers are from 2 to 16, and the winner is number 5. Who is number 5? see. Number five is Denise Chang. So yay! Congratulations Denise Chang. Um, I don't remember if I said in the video or not, but just go ahead and send me a message and confirm that that's the kind of cupcakes you want with the frosting you want and send me your address and I will get that order in to Sweet Cream's Bakery and she will get it out and I will email you with the confirmation and all that good fun stuff. And like I said um, in a previous episode, I'm not sure if you saw it or not, but um, the frosting will come in a piping bag on the side and you will have to pipe the frosting on the cupcakes yourself just because that's the best way for them to be shipped. So yay, congratulations! Um, and then also in current events, we have the February March finish objects thread going on. And um, I got the three categories going, the yarn category, where if you knit something with the yarn, or, well, do anything with yarn, really. There's the yarn category, the fabric category, and the fiber category. And you can enter once into each, but you can share as much as you want. So, um, so far, I picked up the prizes for the fabric category, and I think there may only be one entry so far. Um, so maybe this will be hers. We'll see. Um, but I picked up some fabric. So I picked up this chevron pattern fabric. It's just a cotton. And it's like 0.8 yards. 
um, but I thought it was really pretty. I know it's really popular for this kind of design to be made into a project bag, so I thought that. And I try to keep everything kind of in the same color scheme. So here's this brown fabric that I picked up too. And it's got like little flowers on it and the lines. I just thought it was gorgeous. So I mean, it could be paired with the chevrons if you wanted, but I picked up the brown to be paired with um, this other fabric. So this, um, I tried to get two yards of it, but there was a flaw in it, so I had them cut it off. So I think it's like a yard and like a yard point eight, maybe point nine. It was just a little bit at the end, so I just had them cut it. But I got this fabric to go with this fabric. This one is my favorite. Uh, so there's two whole yards of this fabric as well. It's like this pretty beige with this swirly flower mix on it. Let's see if we can get close up. I just, this one was my absolute favorite. And then I didn't realize till later that this one is actually really pretty too. So the winner of the fabric category will get that. So it's almost one, two, three, over four yards of fabric that are kind of, kind of coordinating. <laughs> but hey, I think it's a pretty good prize. So that will be the prize for the fabric category. And for the yarn and fiber category, I have, um, Decided to dye up some stuff to give away. So I haven't ordered the yarn yet. I'm not sure which yarn I'm going to get. I'm thinking I'm going to end up getting some um, naked fingering weight yarn. Um, but I know for the fiber, I ordered a pound of blue faced swirl top. So it is white, natural white, and natural brown blue-faced wool swirled together. And I'm really excited about that because um, when you dye it, the two different natural colors will take the dye differently. And I'm planning on dyeing them a solid color. So you should get this light and dark color that can be swirled together to make like, I don't know. I have a feeling this is going to be really pretty. I don't know though. But that's what I'm thinking for the fiber. And the yarn, um, like I said, I'm thinking fingering weight and I'm still probably going to attempt to do some self-striping. So that is to come. And so, oh, and then for current events, the Ravelinux in today, and um, you guys did way better than I did. Um, I'm amazed. You guys are awesome. I am terrible. I made those couple of squares for one of my works in progress, and that's it. That's all I did. <laughs> I had a feeling that might happen, and so I wasn't going to participate, but I thought, no, maybe that'll be the driving force I need. Nope, just wasn't happening for me, so, um, but I hope you guys had a great time with it, and, um, I know most of you got to crank out a lot of projects, so, way to go. <laughs> um, and then, upcoming events. So, um, I, when I went to pick up the fabric for the giveaway, I saw some fabric in the remnants bin, and I picked it up. So, this is what it is. It's like a white fabric with all this like embroidered designs on it. And that's when I remembered, when I saw this, I remembered, oh yeah, so um, Lindsay and I are going to be going to the Renaissance Fair this spring and we're going to be making some Renaissance Fair dresses. And I saw this and I'm like, oh this would be perfect for some trim and accent for my dress. So that will be upcoming. Um, I've never made a dress before. So this will be interesting, but I will share everything I learned with you guys um, and any tips or tricks. And then also for upcoming events, I saw in the request thread that um, you guys might be interested in a project bag sew along, and I think that would be awesome. Um, I'm thinking that um, we could either decide on a pattern or everyone can make their own. Um, if people are interested in video tutorials, I could do that as part of my sew along. And of course there would be prizes. I'm thinking about like um, whatever project bag I end up sewing, I'll give it away filled with goodies. Like probably some little fabrics, pieces, and maybe some mini skeins and some, you know, candy or something good. So uh, 
that's what I have in mind. Let me know what you guys think. Would you be interested in a project bag so long or is that just wasting my time? <laughs> not maybe not wasting my time, but wasting our time. So um, yeah. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Pretty short episode. I'm sorry this is kind of up later than usual. I'm still trying to get used to my night schedule and get this thing on lockdown. So um, in the meantime, happy crafting, and I will see you guys next week.